Ed, it's good to have you. It looks like a lot of the reasons you cited excess inventories, that's the dynamic taking place in the market today. So what happened? What happened was we had a, a price spike that was really a result of the initial reaction to Russia's invasion of Ukraine and Europe and others deciding to get off of Russian crude in a scramble to find alternatives. So there was a bidding up of Brent and other related crudes. And yeah, the market was tighter at that time than it's turned out to be. Uh, we're now in a very different situation. We were not expecting last March that the world was going to be facing a recession. So when we look at uh, 2023 versus now, uh, we're looking at demand growth that's going to be really on the very low side. We're looking at demand much lower than uh, most other people. We're thinking demand is going to be about a growth of uh, 1.3 million barrels a day, 1%, basically. Uh, we're, we're looking at China right now, uh, which could have growth, but its demand at this moment is about a million barrels a day lower than a year ago. Europe is entering recession. Demand is lowering lower than a year ago and with nowhere up to go. And the U.S. is seeing no year-on-year -year growth in demand whatsoever with the recession lying ahead. So we have three big economies that are not seeing significantly robust growth, with the only hope for it being in China of the big three. Uh, as it may or may not come out of this slowdown. So, Ed, w would it be fair to say you're even more bearish now? We are bearish, but there's a new factor in the market, uh, and that's uh, the U.S. acting as a floor price agent. Uh, we've heard that the White House is very public about saying there's a price at which we're going to start buying SPR oil. That price seems to be WTI hitting at $70 a barrel. You've got to take it in, uh, as a message to believe, particularly as China also starts buying when the price is low. And we know that OPEC plus countries want to keep a floor under prices. So we have a lot of dynamics in the market now for buying excess crude, moving it back to the strategic stocks, which were released in abundance this past year uh, in order to bring the price down. And it succeeded in doing that. Hey, Ed, Frank Holland here. You just mentioned China a second ago. So when you made this call, it's hard to believe that you, you knew that the, the zero COVID policy in China would extend this long. I don't think anybody knew that. Are you also factoring in the fact that, again, I asked an earlier guest, that China is going to reopen? We're already seeing the signs. We've seen a number of reports and that Chinese people will not only uh, get out their house, they're going to travel around their country and to other countries as well. Absolutely. And in our low case for oil demand growth, Half of that comes from China, believe it or not. Uh, it's a complicated story in China. The big growth of new oil demand is going to be clearly on the aviation side. We're seeing um, international flights already starting to grow at an incredibly rapid rate. Uh, but there's another hidden thing that we don't much think about, uh, and that is what China did last year. In last September, uh, when they started having blackouts, they stopped exporting petroleum products. They started uh, slamming that down. They were exporting last summer, a year ago, in summer 21, around a million 200,000 barrels a day of petroleum product. They stopped doing that altogether last September, uh, and now they're opening up again. So, yes, we expect Chinese demand to actually grow, but we expect Chinese exports to grow as well, huh. and we think they'll be back up to that 1.2 million a day level by the time we hit Q1.